Just yes, say I got a message from a viewer regarding the Nokia N900, the phone that I've had for a while now and I'm constantly talking about. Um, and his question was, is there a way to make the, the font in the text messaging extra large because his girlfriend uh, is visually impaired. I guess she needs things really big. And right now, I guess he has a Windows 7 phone and she has to take her text messages, copy them and paste them into a Word document and enlarge the text to be able to uh, view them. I just keep doing that so the screensaver doesn't come on, or the power save mode. Um, so he was wondering if you could do that and I was pretty sure that probably could come up with something. I knew because I played with it a while ago that there was a uh, SQLite uh, database uh, and that's where a lot of the information is stored including text messages. So all I had to do is write a script that would grab the information from that database. So basically what I did was I wrote a script that uh, looks at the last 50 text messages, takes the output of that, and puts them into an HTML file, a temporary one in the temp directory, uh, as headers, so they're extra large, and then automatically opens it up inside the default browser. So I added icons in my desktop. If I scroll over here to this desktop, you can see I have a little message icon here. And when I click that, it's going to bring up my last 50 uh, text messages. Um, this is currently going to be, now I have uh, my thumb over the left side of the screen here because it does uh, also grab the phone numbers they came from and they're listed along the left side of the screen. I don't want you guys calling my wife or anybody. But as you can see, there's the text. It's larger than it is already in the text, uh, than it is in the text message application. But you can zoom in just like you could on a web page and you can make the font pretty big. Scroll around. Uh, and obviously right now this is just a quick little go at this. Um, if I get a chance I'll add other features because uh, right now you know it shows the last 50 and they're in reverse order, the newest ones at the top and really that can get a little confusing when conversations coming on. Um, so I just wanted to share this with you guys, show you what it looked like and um, let's have a look at what that script looks like. Okay, this is my second go at actually trying to record uh, this tutorial. And the reason for that is because every time I tried searching through something, I was busy trying to read all the messages on the screen to make sure I wasn't displaying any private text messages or personal information. So instead of doing that, I'm going to explain stuff, show the script, but not actually run it. Uh, I was trying to go step by step like I normally do and show you guys. I just don't have time to edit out all my text messages for this tutorial, and I, but I want to get it done. Uh, anyway, I'm logged in remotely to my phone using SSH, my Nokia N900. I'm going to go into the default user's home directory and into a hidden directory called uh, .rt, it's dot because it's hidden, .rtcom dash event logger. And in here there's a file called el-v1.db, which is a SQL Lite 3 or a SQL Lite 3. I'm really not sure what is the proper way to say it. I didn't look it up before I started recording this. Um, database. And uh, other files in here like this one, .old and .old2 are just backups I made because I do that every once in a while. Because this, this events log actually logs a lot of stuff uh, regarding your ingoing, outgoing text messages as well as your... Uh, ingoing and outgoing phone messages. So all that stuff's stored in here, and I don't even know what else. I haven't really looked through it too much. Um, but what, what I did was I created a little script that just uses SQLite 3, outputs all that stuff as a plain text, and then uses grep and set and cut uh, to sort through it all, and then adds some HTML tags, puts it in a temporary folder uh, file in your temp folder, and then opens up the web browser. Um, if I was better with database stuff and I was more knowledgeable on using things like SQLite, um, well then, uh, I probably could have trimmed up this code some and not have to use grep or head or some of these commands. So if you're one of those people who's better with databases than me, don't, don't be pulling your hair out when you see my script because it, it could definitely be cleaner if I was more knowledgeable on the subject. Um, but my script works as you saw at the beginning of the video here. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to say vim and I wrote it all into a script, put it in my uh, USR bin folder under a file called vtext for virtual text. 
So this is what my script looks like. Obviously, we have our bin bash, or I'm sorry, our shebang line, which is bin bash, saying to use the bash interpreter. Then I'm using uh, SQLite. Once again, I hope I'm saying that right. And I'm directing it towards that file we were just talking about. Then we're looking at the database and we're selecting from the events table these fields. Now, if I was to display out those fields, in fact, I probably could have deleted this event type dot ID or underscore ID. Um, that's in there just because when I was looking up how to do online, that was in the script I was basing this off of. Um, I'm not even sure exactly what that column stands for. But when we output this, this first one, the service ID, that column actually displays out uh, one of three numbers from what I've seen. A uh, one, two, or three. One, I have no clue. There's really no other information on those lines the, at the little glance I had. Two, I think, are my outgoing messages. And then three are the incoming messages, which is what we care about today. Now, also, I could throw in the outgoing messages. Probably would make more sense. Once again, this is really early stages, and I'm only going to work on this if I have time. I just wanted to be able to do this for the viewer. Um, so what I did was I took that output sorted it by the time field so that the newest ones are at top. And um, then I grepped out, I pipe it into grep, and it grabs only the lines that begin with three. So it would eliminate all those twos and ones. After I did that, I say head dash n 50, which grabs the last 50 or the first 50, which in, since we're going descending when we're outputting it, um, it's taken those last 50 text messages and ignoring everything after that. Then we're cutting with a delimiter of our pipe because this uh, SQLite command outputs uh, the fields divided with a delimiter of the pipe symbol. And I'm grabbing fields three and four. Three and four because that's the message and then four is the phone number, the remote uh, UID is the phone number that the text message was sent from. Then I'm piping that into said and substituting that pipe symbol for an ending uh, header tag, uh, not header tag, um, headline tag. Headline tag? Maybe it is a header tag. Ugh. In HTML. I'm sorry, I'm not doing too great on this tutorial, but I'm just trying to get it done. Um, Basically, so that we have a big font and we can actually later on jump to those uh, headers. Uh, so basically, that's the end. So you're saying, might be saying, well, where is the beginning tag? Well, that's actually down here. Once we take that and put that basically between um, the phone number and the actual message, then we take each line and put at the beginning of it H1, and then at the end of each line, a horizontal line, so you can see where one message ends and begins. We take all that and redirect it into our temporary msg.html file. And then, I don't know why I put this on the same line here, but we open up the default browser with the URL of that file. And you get what you saw earlier. It's in the web browser, so you can zoom in, zoom out, scroll around, um, and make the font as big as you'd like. Um, so I'm sorry this probably was not the best tutorial because <laughs> I can't really show it to you without showing my text messages. And once again, I just, I'm just i very uh, short on time here and needed to get this done, but uh, and I didn't have time to go through and delete text messages uh, and modify that, that database for you. But I promise if you have Nokia N900, download the script. Uh, there should be a link in the description. And I'm also working on learning how to make deb files, so I might throw a deb file up too. Check out the links in the description. Uh, if you go to the first one, should be a post on this video, and, and all the code should be there, uh, probably up on Pastebin or in a deb file. And copy and paste it, make it executable, and give it a go. Uh, and you'll see just the script will run on your machine. Then you just can make a little uh, desktop file for it, which if I make a deb file, I'll throw that in there. And then you can add the icon to your desktop and with one click, see your last 50 text messages in a large font. Um, once again, I hope this wasn't too confusing. I usually I do a better job of showing you step by step on how things work. I tried doing that and I just it just wasn't happening. Um, but uh, that's it. So now that it's in my user bin folder and I make it executable, now I can type from any folder vtext and you're not seeing it 
on the screen here, but on my phone, my web browser just opened up as you saw earlier in the video. So uh, I thank you for watching. And please visit filmsarechris.com. Check out the links in the description. And I hope that you had a great day. And if this is your first time watching one of my tutorials, this wasn't one of the better ones. So <laughs> thank you and have a great day.